and how does your different experiences affect the different ways that you want to run SEIU in this space? Well, Ari, I got here because How about this? I got here because of uh, hundreds of thousands of individual non-union workers who made a decision to stand up and speak up inside their workplaces. And one that I think about all the time is Stanley Lyles, who was a respiratory therapist in a hospital in Southern California, who when I first met him said, I don't think the union can make any difference in my life. He earned about $17 an hour and had no health benefits and no retirement, and was really angry about how the ventilators in his hospital didn't work. And he couldn't spend time administering his uh, treatments to the patients. So I coaxed him into a union meeting uh, one day and said, you should hear what other people in the hospital are saying. You don't have to make a commitment, but it would be great for you to see that everybody is frustrated and wants to change things. So I was so excited the day he walked through the door and uh, he heard a housekeeper talking about the faulty equipment that was creating more infections in patient rooms. And he stepped up and said, well, I'm having problems too. He didn't know the housekeepers were and that's how the union got formed in that hospital. He raised his wages 18%. He won fully paid family health care. They have a say in the treatment of patients and every other non-union worker in hospitals across Southern California had their wages raised as a result of his action and hundreds of other workers. And that's how I got to be president of SEIU. I want to I take the same, the same point to Joe, which is when we look at private sector unions today, as you know, by the end of this president's term, we're looking at one out of 20 workers being in a union. And that's down from what used to be one out of three. So it's getting lonely out there. You've been out there as a worker, and you're there now as a as a labor leader. Tell us about what what does that mean uh, for for labor writ large. Well, I guess the best way for me to start would be I cut meat for a lot of years in Wisconsin, and I had a good union job. I was able to raise my family, four kids, and we had opportunity and something to look forward. But it isn't just the unions are declining, and over this period of time. It's this attack on the middle class. And I learned very early in my life that the only way you're gonna keep a middle class is if you empower workers. Middle class uh, was created by the unions, not by themselves, you know, with the help of religious leaders, community activists. And we, we have the task right now, you just heard from the, the public employee uh, unions, you know, we're helping them in a real defensive fight. The attack was on the public employee unions thinking they could divide us, but they can't. We're all in this together. Workers are workers. And, uh, and we're going to uh, The Change Wing Unions, uh, SEIU, Food Commercial Workers, Teamsters, the Farm Workers, along with uh, Communication Workers, and, and uh, uh, UAW, we're going to keep up the defensive fight. But we need to go on the offense. We have to create a movement, not just with the labor movement, Labor movement didn't create the middle class by itself. It's got to be created with our allies. We got to use everybody in this room because it's in your best interest and the country's best interest that we recreate that. And you do that by building a strong union so you empower workers. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to tell you one, one of the things I love about this conference is you, you get out and you meet with people in the breakout sessions and small groups, and then you, then you can take it to the to the larger sessions and at the. At one of the small labor discussions, I was talking to someone from, from UFW about what they're trying to do in California. Uh, and I just want to spotlight that briefly. You know, Jerry Brown is governor there again. And it's got to say something about this rightward shift, uh, because he's done a lot of good things in his life. But the rightward shift of our politics, he was Governor Moonbeam, for people who remember. <laughs> At the convention, he was the leftward flank, the Democratic wing of the party saying, you know, let Jerry speak. Uh, and what I was really learning about just this week, meeting with people, um, is that he is actually mocking and signing uh, a, what looks like a very good farm workers bill out there that would help farm workers have private ballots so they don't have pressure when they're deciding whether to unionize. 
Uh, and it's one that Schwarzenegger had vetoed, but it's passed again. And now you have the thing that we always seem to have, which is, oh, we elected the Democrat, what's going on? Um, but there's been a tremendous engagement across not only labor, but movement progressives as well. Move on, I think, to its credit, engage its California list on that. Before I turn it to you, I just a show of hands, how many people uh, have lived in California or live there now by a show of hands? Okay, so we, we, we have a little caucus meeting right here going. So, um, so if we can get a little local on that, turning from Madison to Sacramento, uh, what's going on out there and, and what can be done to push uh, Governor Moonbeam? Well, I, I'm going to go see Governor Brown. I remember when he was Moonbeam, uh, but uh, he's a, supposedly a progressive governor and should be supporting this issue. I'm going to see him once. And we're going to do everything we can. We needed all of you to help. to actually is a uh, website. Uh, ufw.org or slash sb104 petition and the more pressure we can put on the more emails that we can get to him i think if we build the pressure i think he'll see the light and do the right thing god knows that if anybody needs a union and needs representation it sees more people that work in the fields uh, out in california and other states mm -hmm. And what our unions have been doing together is loaning organizers to the UFW and helping do the outreach. There's this online petition that's been delivered to the governor. The bill hit his desk a day ago. Um, Artie Rodriguez started a fast with Howard Berman. Um, today, I'm going to join the fast tomorrow. We are trying to make sure that um, there is a spotlight on Brown in the way that you just said, Ari, to try and create the alternative vision for America, where working people can have a right to a voice on the job, improve their lives, and then participate in the democracy and deal with all the justice issues that we really care about. The UFW has been a huge advocate of immigrant justice in this country, and we have to make sure that 12 million working people that live in the shadows in this country are brought into the light and can participate in our democracy. It's not just the farm workers. That's what we're doing this week. We're going to continue that until, until we have victory there. But all of our unions are working together. I see on the screen, there's the Speak Out. We're going to work with the, the Progressive Congressional Caucus. We're going to hit a number of, I think, about 17 cities. And, and people have to realize what's happening, what's happening to our country, what's happening to workers, what's happening to our kids. And we're going to publicize that. We're going to integrate our campaign. So if it's an SEIU campaign, the food commercial workers are there, we'll be there with the Teamsters, we'll be there with the auto workers. But it's not just about the, getting bargaining rights, it's about saving the middle class and rebuilding them. Yeah, Mary Kay, what else are, are you doing with sort of networks, progressives, and other folks generally across the country? I mean, take California is the one example we talked about. Madison, um, we talked about as a, as a local labor push um, that has gotten national attention. What is the sort of larger national strategy, both politically and for, and for unionization? Well, we think we need to unite all of our fights together. And Netroots Nation, in my mind, is the best expression of how we think about fighting back together. Labor, LGBT, environmental, immigrant rights, workers' rights. When I think about my history in the union, the union is the vehicle that allows us to stand up for LGBT equality and demand it in our contracts and then have a same-sex marriage fight in the state of California with our allies. And so we have to unite our fights and we believe in the labor movement that we have to reach out to non-union workers on a scale that is close to what happened in the labor movement at the time of the Great Depression. Because as we've heard from Franken, Boss Hutner, and others just this morning, the disparity of wealth in this country is now at the same level that it was in the 30s. And that is unacceptable in a country that generates as much income. And we don't need it concentrated at the top. We all need to share in the prosperity that we're generating. And we need to insist on making sure that every other right, voting rights, LGBT equality, environmental justice, immigrant justice, are all part of this same fight. Because we have to get this country done. One of our fights, and again, I refer to this company as the poster child for what for our race to the bottom, and that's Walmart. We have a couple of Walmart workers here today, one from Los Angeles and one from Miami. It's a big campaign, but if you want to look at anything that has driven wages and benefits to the bottom, look at, the, at Walmart. And it's not just in retail, it's in manufacturing, it's all across the country. 
And we have to reverse that trend. So that's a campaign. It's not just the United Food Commercial Workers, and it's not just the unions. It's all of us. And I want to thank those of you in this room that are helping us already. But we need everybody in this fight. Now, we did want to do one more uh, special thing. We'll see if this works. Uh, but instead of the musical guest, my last <laughs> terrible late night joke, um, we, we have one more person, though, which I, which I think is a pretty cool thing, uh, rather than just us talkers and, and liberal agitators and labor uh, leaders, we, we have someone that, uh, why don't you tell us about this person? Uh, Carla Dye is a nursing home worker here um, from St. Paul, Minnesota, who tried to form a union at her nursing home last July and was fired for trying to stand up on behalf of the residents that she cared so deeply about. Thanks for coming, Carla. Hello. My name is Carla. I have been a certified registered nursing assistant for 24 years. Uh, I've worked at, um, uh, lately, a residential facility for uh, seniors with memory care issues. I also was working in an assistant living facility. Uh, issues arose with employees uh, that well, we had concerns about health care, the quality of care to our seniors. We also had concerns um, in regards to, oh, I'm sorry, I get emotional with this. But we also had concerns um, with management not hearing our voices. And we are the voice for the voiceless, being our seniors. Uh, that we provide uh, service and care to. Uh, management decided to not recognize our faces, our bodies, and the hands of their employees who provided this care. Management decided to become deaf to the sound of our voices to speak for our seniors and uh, getting quality care for them. So, this brought uh, myself, along with nine other co-workers, to decide to organize and form a union. Uh, thank you. We, uh, this, this was a long, hard job. It took uh, two months for us to organize and get together with all kinds of employees to have them understand the needs and the demands of not just us as workers, but our, our residents. Uh, because of what it all comes down to it, without them, we have no jobs. So uh, we organized and uh, I was on the committee along with nine other co-workers and what, uh, what we thought was gonna be us having or gaining a voice actually became a fight uh, with management. And management would um, slander and, and go against uh, the organizers. Um, they would turn us against, uh, co-workers against other co-workers who were supposed to be a team. They actually became a wall to divide us. And it, it affected us in providing quality care to our residents. I stood to fight for the care of our residents, and in, in that fight, I lost my job just because I wanted to have a voice. I, I think that the only way for us to have a voice as healthcare workers is to have a union. Without a union, we are not heard and we are not seen. So I ask that, I ask that employees be able to organize and, and form their union without harassment and intimidation from management. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.